So next up today, I'm excited to announce is Michael Norton. I work with him personally day to day. He is the former president of Zig Ziglar Corporation and the current enterprise executive vice president of sales. Please welcome Michael Norton. Thank you so much, Emily. It's a pleasure to be here with everybody. Good afternoon uh, or good morning, depending on where you are or good evening if you're another part of the uh, of the world. It's great to have you here. Uh, I'm going to spend about 30 minutes with you building upon some of the things that Dave Matson just shared. And I will share with you that I was watching the chat a little bit. So for Lauren Miller, who put in there, she'd like to know the balance between salesmanship and AI and chat GPT. And Casey Johnson wants to know, how does this all really fit together? Scott Sherwin, one of my esteemed colleagues, he put something in the chat. If you go back to it and find it, he said, people will be motivated to talk to you if they know it's about them and not you. But I think my favorite uh, thing that I saw in chat came from Stefan King. Stefan, I don't know if you're still hanging on and watching this or not, but Stefan said he's worried about AI taking over the role of interpersonal skills. And as we go about the conversation today, that's really where I'm going to land. Uh, I'm going to focus on three areas today. I'm going to focus on behavior, attitude, and technique, the Sandler success triangle, but I'm going to do it in a, in a slightly different order. I'm going to go attitude or mindset first and kind of dispel some of the myths that are out there about AI and ChatGPT. Then I'm going to talk about behaviors, and I'm going to talk about how we can use it as a tool and some best practices. And then lastly, I want to give you a few skills to walk away with. So if that sounds fair, we're going to just jump right into it here. All right. So do me a favor. Let's, uh, since we're in the chat, put in the chat, if when you think about AI, uh, AI and ChatGPT, when you think about it, are you excited? Are you confused? Are you terrified? Um, when this all started coming about a few months ago and it was all everybody could talk about, I started doing some straw polling. I started talking to different sales folks, sales leaders. I am back to traveling a little bit. So I get to meet people in an airplane and, uh, and train stations, wherever it is. And if I know I'm talking to somebody in sales, I'm like, so what do you think about this? And I got a variety of answers, but these three seem to come up the most. So some people who are really tech forward, they're gonna be excited. I see a lot of B and C coming in. I see A, 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 very excited. So yeah, they're tech forward. They're super excited about where AI can play a part in help, helping them help their customers so they can be successful. Some people just don't know the power of it. So they are a little confused. Where do I use it? When do I use it? You know, like Lauren Miller put in the chat, where's the balance in all of that? And then the last one, some people are terrified. And we're going to talk about that, you know, where, where Stefan King said, hey, where's this? Is this going to take over for us? And, and I didn't ask him to put that in the chat. I don't even know him. I met him here in the chat. But that's going to lead me right into my next topic. And when you're looking at this graphic, what you're looking here is called the Giant's Causeway in Ireland. And when you're looking at those, what you're seeing is natural formed basalt rock formations. And the legend is thousands of years old. And the legend says that God put those basalt stones there, created that causeway so the giant from Ireland, Finn McCool, could cross over into Scotland and fight the, the giant from Scotland, Bon and Donner. And so the day came, Finn McCool said, I'm going over, I'm taking the fight to Bon and Donner. He goes over the causeway and he looks over, he climbs over the mountain, looks down in the valley and he sees Bon and Donner. And Bon and Donner is massive. He's much bigger than Finn McCool. So Finn McCool hightails it back to Ireland, finds his wife and tells her how big the giant is. The quick thinking wife, as most wives are very quick thinking, says, we're going to dress you up like a baby. So they do. They dress Finn McCool up like a baby. And Bon and Donner comes over. He crosses the causeway, goes into Ireland, sees this baby, the giant of a baby, and says, oh, my goodness, if this baby is that big, how big must their parents be? And he leaves and goes back to Scotland and they never fight. They never have the, they never meet in battle. And I bring this up to you because what are the giants that you're facing in your head right now? Your attitude, your mindset about this AI and chat GPT, right? Technology as a whole, is that the giant that you're ready to fight or willing to fight? So you have to ask yourself that question. Where are you? And here's the giant that's in a lot of people's head, including Stefan. So, and this question has been bantered around by many in, in breakout sessions and in online forums that I'm in. Is AI going to change or ChatGPT going to do away with the need for salespeople? Well, we've been hearing that myth since the late 90s when technology really came into vogue and all kinds of tools became available. And then the internet exploded and they said, well, we'll never need salespeople again. But the truth is, there's more salespeople today on the face of the earth than any time in history. 
So we know that that was a myth. So this is a myth too. But what we do know is that AI empowered, GPT empowered, and technology enabled salespeople will outperform and probably make those salespeople who are not willing to get on the bus obsolete. So we have an opportunity here to embrace this. And when I say change, this is one of my favorite quotes of all time, because I think we're always in a constant state of change. Eric Hofer says, in times of change, it is the learners that will inherit the future, while the learned find themselves beautifully equipped to live in a world that no longer exists. Constant growth, continuous learning. And if we took a little liberty with this quote, and we said, in times of change, it is the sales learners that will inherit the future, while the sales learned, those salespeople who think they know it all, will find themselves beautifully equipped to live in a cell and sell in a world that no longer exists. We have to be about change. Satya Nadella, the uh, CEO of Microsoft, says it this way. He says, he's not looking for know-it-alls. Don't be a know-it-all. He's looking for a learn-it-all. And I would encourage you to lean into this technology. And we'll talk about some of the myths and the fears and, and, and things that are really not there, but the tools that will actually help you become more productive. So think about your sales job, sales leaders, sales uh, folks, even customer service folks, sales engineers, whoever we have on this call. I want you to think about what our real job is here. Job one is to establish a basis for trust. Whatever we're doing, we are establishing a basis of trust, wherever you find that commonality. And I am going to show you some of the things in Humantic AI that they've alluded to. But before we even get there, how do we establish that basis of trust? Well, we know more about them before we even get there. Once we get there, how do we truly earn their trust? How do we, how do we earn their trust by doing what we say we're going to do when we say we're going to do it and provide really good insights to whatever the conversation is? And then how do we further trust? How do we do further develop that trust in them so that we know at a, time, at a certain time we're going to be able to go higher, wider, and deeper, upsell, cross-sell, because they truly trust us? And then lastly, we want to maintain that trust because you're going to hear me say this again in just a little while. It's all about developing that human-to-human -human connection and maintaining that trust over a long period of time. I know many of you on this call have had customers for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Even if they left one company and went to another company, they probably brought you with them. They brought you with them because they felt like they could trust you. And trust is job one. It's been said that people, you know, we, we, we hear this all the time. People buy from people they like, and, and that, that is true. But it's also been said that people will talk to people they like, but they'll do business with people that they trust and respect. So would you rather be liked or trusted and respected and get the business? If you get all three, if you get the trifecta, that's awesome. Let's jump into this a little bit. Uh, where does that human connection meet with AI and ChatGPT? The first thing I would say, and I'll just uh, reiterate what Dave said, don't be afraid of it. Lean into it. It's here. It's not going away. And it's only in its infancy. You know, imagine four or five months ago, the, the rumblings we heard about it. And now imagine three months from now, five months from now, two years from now. It's just in its infancy. So we have to embrace it. But here's the other thing. Here's the other trap I found that salespeople, even sales leaders, uh, are falling into. They're overusing it. They're counting on that as their only tool. And Dave said, you know, he can write up, he can go in and say, write me a 30 second commercial or even write me a column or a blog. And that's great. It's a great starting point, but you can't take verbatim whatever they're going to give you. What we have to do is say, okay, that's a great starting point. Let me validate, trust, but validate, trust, but verify and go in. You know, it's creating something for us. It's always, you know, Dave Matson's always told me this my whole career with him too, is it's easier to edit than it is to create. So let ChatGPT do the creation. We go in and we do the editing of it because the reality is it's here and it's going to replace the routine tasks that we always get caught up in. It's going to give us amazing data and insights that will help us build that bridge with our customers. But here's where I want to talk. This is about me talking to you about you, not about AI and ChatGPT. What I want to convey to you here is that the human connection, even as technology advances and it can continue to advance, Human connection is at the core of every relationship that we have, right? People will still buy from people. And regardless of all the stats, that they're 70% of the way there, 72% of the way, 68% of the way there, the stats that say some people don't even want a salesperson involved. When you come to a complex sale, a real B2B opportunity, people still buy from people and they need your trusted advice to do so. So in the information age, when they're doing all the research on your product and solution, when they're going to reviews of your product, when they're joining online communities, they're doing everything they can to find out about you. 
will never be able to replace the inter the, the value that you bring of that human interaction, your ability to, to bond and rapport with them, your ability to have empathy for what's going on in their situation, and the emotional intelligence that you bring to it. It's completely irreplaceable. Let's just jump into this AI. I mean, look at this little graphic here. AI is going to be in everywhere. It's going to be in every part of our life, right? And if we do get terrified about it, uh, if we are nervous about where it's going, because I don't know if any of you have watched the show Rabbit Hole with Kiefer Sutherland, where it's all about how AI is controlling and influencing and controlling the population. So if we go to the extreme in a show like that, you know, we could get terrified. But what we want to do is not see it as a threat, not as salespeople and sales leaders. What we want to see it as is an enhancement to what we're already doing. AI, can, we need to leverage AI to free us up from the administrative tasks and burdens that as sellers we get caught up with. And again, many of you on this call right now, whether you're leading people, you're a salesperson, you're a trainer and coaching salespeople, what's the number one thing we hear from salespeople why, as to why they're not productive? They'll tell you it's because they have too many administrative things that they have to take care of. So here's my first give to you. My first give to you is go to ChatGPT and just type in administrative tasks that AI can take over for a salesperson or some language like that. Ask AI what it can do for you as a salesperson. You'll get no less than 20 answers of how it can help you. And when we can offload those administrative tasks to AI and technology, it, that does free us up to have that more of that time with that human to human connection. AI is going to surface key insights and data. And here's the thing about key insights and data. It's going to give us all of that great information and we want that information, but data and insights are awesome. But here's where you come in. It's the contextual relevance that you're going to bring to the combination of that data and an insight. You're going to bring contextual relevance to it based on your customer knowledge and all the years you've been in, the, in your industry. And then you're going to be able to formulate really good questions that will help your customers understand your value proposition better. Right. So while all AI is doing your administrative tasks, it's helping you with data and insights. This also focuses us or lets us focus on our innately human role as salespeople. This lets us to allows us to deeply listen, you know, listen more deeply, build trust and build that heartfelt connection. So let's talk about just listening deeply for a second. And I'll be as guilty as anybody on this call. I've had times in my life where I have talked myself out of a sale. I've talked past the close. Anybody here do that? Anybody talk past the close? I'm sure sales leaders, you know, some of your salespeople have done it. Salespeople, you know, you've done it yourself. We've all have. But I'll guarantee 100% of everybody on this call, you've never listened your way out of a sale. So we need to be able to deeply listen and understand and take all that information that AI is giving us to build a deeper relationship and build that trust with our prospects and customers. So we have to see this as an opportunity. The advance of analytics, the automated intelligence that it's giving us, the automated assistance along the way. And let's let's go back in time a couple decades, maybe even more than a couple decades. Before our CRM was here, it was called SFA, Salesforce Automation Tools. And there was a bunch of really cool ones. And then it became CRM, Customer Relationship Management. The R is the most important thing for us. It's the relationship that's out there. And as Scott Sherwin said earlier, people, when we make it about them, they're going to listen. And we use our CRM tool correctly and all the other enabling tools we have to make it about the customer. They're going to lean in and listen. It's all about the relationship. The technology, for those of you who resist still you're using your CRM tool because you think it's big brother, that's a big mistake. You need to use your CRM tool as an absolute job aid. It's giving you all your historical information, all your attachments, your proposals, your quotes, your contacts in one location, right? So that was my plug for, uh, for CRM. All right, let's have a little fun now, and we'll get back into the chat here for a second. Do me a favor, if you wouldn't mind. Um, put in the chat, if you've ever pulled a muscle, just yes or no, pull a calf muscle, a quad, a hamstring, bicep, you know, pec muscle. Did you ever pull a muscle working out, running, lifting, playing tennis, anything you've done? And, and I'll tell you, as you're filling that in, if you think about if you've ever pulled a muscle or not, I ask people and I'll do this in a keynote. I'll do this in a, in a training session. And I'll ask the room and usually about half, if not more than half of the room, raise their arm. And I say, so why did you pull a muscle? And the answer is, well, because I didn't stretch or I didn't warm up. And then I see all a lot of yeses. I see the ouches in there, Randy Rich. Awesome. 
And so I say, okay, so you didn't stretch, you didn't warm up. Here's the bigger question, the deeper question. Why didn't you warm up? Why didn't you stretch? And they'll say, I didn't have time. Uh, it was inconvenient. Um, you know, I've been lifting, running, playing tennis my whole life. I don't need to do it. Nobody ever taught me how to properly do it. And then I ask this question, and I'll ask this thing. You can put it in the chat if you're vulnerable enough. Have you ever pulled a sales muscle? Meaning that you lost the deal because you weren't prepared. You went in really cocky, winging it, thinking you knew everybody in the room. You knew the questions to ask. You knew how to present your solution. So you blew off the pre-call plan and the pre-brief. Did you ever lose a, a sale? Again, I know I have. I walked in there really cocky thinking it was mine. I owned it and sure enough, walked out without the opportunity. Why though? Why don't we do a pre-call plan? So I ask, and they're like, <laughs> same answers. Didn't have time. It was too inconvenient. I've been selling for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. I don't need to do a pre-call plan anymore, right? Nobody ever taught me how. Well, at Sandler, we are massive advocates for pre-call planning and pre-brief. We believe that when you take the time to pre-call plan, you are some, you're creating good sales habits that you're going to follow through on and execute in your sales call. And then you couple that with debriefing on the back end, you're cementing those habits. So sales leaders, sales managers, sales people, if we can encourage you to do anything here at taking this away from a behavior piece, get better at pre-call planning. We give it a lot of lip service. We all say we do it, right? We say, yeah, we have the forms. We have the tools. It's in, in, in our technology. But do you really hold yourself accountable to do it? If you want to know more about this, please ask your Sandler trainer who invited you to this session. I'll have my email up at the end of this. You can reach out to me. We'd be happy to give you more information about account planning, pre-call planning, territory uh, and account planning, right? Pursuit navigation, pursuit acceleration, all of those things. But it happens in the beginning. We have to be willing to do it. And that's where this comes in. And I'm, not, I'm going to be real brief on this because I only want to make a couple of points. So I went into my chat GPT as I was getting ready for this presentation. And I said, okay, I've been selling for more than 25 years in, in this performance development space, personal professional development. I've been around it a long time. I really feel like I should go and be able to go into any meeting with a chief revenue officer, CEO, EVP of sales, chief learning officer, and I would know the questions I should ask. I probably know the questions they're gonna ask me, or at least I think I do. Probably have my finger on the pulse of the challenges, all of these bullet points. But I went in and asked them. I would ask every one of these. And I got all the answers. And there were some really cool new things, different twists on questions I should ask, right? But here's here the, the thing I want you to focus on and get better at are the prompts, right? Because look at this first bullet point that I asked. I just went in and said, questions I should ask the chief revenue officer. That's a surface level prompt. And we all know, even in our what we teach here at Sandler, surface level questions are going to get you surface level responses, right? So it all be, it became about the prompt. The more I worked with ChatGPT, it really is, how do I go deeper? So here's, again, the first one was question I should ask the chief revenue officer, surface level answer. But then I said, okay, let me think through this. Let me go a little deeper. As a modern salesperson selling a sales training solutions product, what are some questions I should ask my prospect who is the chief revenue officer of an enterprise organization? Bam, the answers were vastly different, much richer and, and, and much better. So then I said, okay, let me think through this again. I'll ask you even a better prompt just about pre-call planning. What are some of the prompts that you recommend, ChatGPT, for a modern salesperson to consider when using ChatGPT? Again, just awesome questions that blew my last slide away. I would say if you're screenshotting, if you're taking anything here you know, from my talk again, look at that third bullet, take it word for word, and put it in your own chat. Uh, chat GPT, but after it says for a modern salesperson, say in the manufacturing industry, in the roofing industry, in uh, pharmaceuticals, right? Whatever your industry is, put that in there because I did it for mine, for our industry. And it gives you different answers when you put the industry in there. Now I'm going to caution you. I'll get back to, again, I'm going to pick on Stefan or just, you know, about the, t the terrifying part of this. Where does it come in and, and, and really where does it work? So on my last bullet point, I'm a big, I'm a big, um, uh, Research guy, I love Gartner and McKinsey. I subscribe to their newsletters. I'm looking at their stuff all the time. So in my pre-call planning, I said, how are Gartner and McKinsey, what are they saying about healthcare IT? Because I was going to be meeting with a healthcare IT uh, sales leader. And this is the exact answer I got back. And this is what we have to remember. As of my last update, January 2022, here are some general insights. And it gave me what they said. And at the end of, the, at the end of what they gave me, they gave me this disclaimer. 
While these are general themes and insights from Gartner and McKinsey only up to 2022. So ChatGPT is looking at historical data and not until they update it and upload new content and data, we're getting that historical data. That's why it's important and it tells us, go to Gartner's website, go to McKinsey's website, validate, take what we're giving you, but verify and validate. There's probably more information. And we could phone it in and hit the easy button and say, okay, well, let's just use what ChatGPT gave us or AI gave us. But the real sales, sales professional, the, the sales professional is going to win and win more often, is going to combine the chat GPT, the AI, all their enabling tools with what's happening re right now and doing their research. All right. I know I'm moving fast. I'm from New Jersey. Sometimes it's 250 words a minute with gusts up to 500. So, I'll, 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 But I'm trying to get in a 30-minute window here. So with that, I'm going to just I'm going to transition right after this slide. You heard Dave Matson say the, the stats, and we all know that it's anywhere around 70% of the decisions already been made. And again, here's where I'm talking to you about you. There's 30% of, so now we're not fighting for 100% of the deal. We're fighting for the 30% that's left. That's why we have to have the slight edge. We have to have the slight edge. And I'm going to share with you that the slight edge is not AI and chat GPT. It's going to contribute to it. You are the slight edge. Again, I'm talking to you about you. And I'm going to give you two examples in very recent, in the last two months, uh, Sandler was named the partner of choice in two very large opportunities. And always, we, whether we win or lose, we ask, why did we win? Why did we lose? I hope you're all doing the same thing. And when we asked, why did we win? We heard two things in both situations. The first was, well, the entire way through the entire sales process, you guys followed your own system. You did everything you said that you're going to teach our salespeople to do, you were actually living it and executing it. And that's hugely important. And we said, okay, what was the second reason? And they said, your salesperson, their caring, their empathy, their availability, their follow through, they were the difference maker. We all get wrapped up in understanding what our the, the differentiators are. And we think about our company, and our products, our solutions. I want you all on this call to understand that the biggest differ differentiator you're going to have against your greatest competitor is you and what you bring to the table. It's going to require leaning into this technology. It's going to require doing a little extra work on your side to make sure you're validating everything, but you are the differentiator. And with that, we're going to jump into this Humantic AI. Dave showed you a little bit about it, but I'd love to show you a little bit more. And is Sharon, um, is Sharon smart with us? Mike? Uh, she is not. So you can just show her uh, screen. If she jumps on, I'll, I'll add her in. All right. I know she was in the green room a little earlier. We're going to do a little, uh, uh, have a guest appearance here. So Sharon, I've known Sharon Smart for a, for for more than 20 years. Customer, a partner, a colleague, uh, but a very high D. You can see over on the far right here on my screen, it says Captain. That red says she's a D. She is uh, uh, a consummate professional, output driven, and dynamic but sincere, right? You'll see, you're seeing that over on the right side of my screen, hopefully right around here. So I asked her, I said, look, you know, we're just about to get involved with this Humantic AI company. I really, I, I value your opinion. Is this accurate? And she's like, oh my God, I can't believe you just nailed me. Like totally nailed me. Now I have, will tell you that I've shared this with other people who say, well, no, that's not me. I'm, I'm a high D and you're telling me I'm a, a high S or I'm, I'm a high C. And at first glance, when they look at that, either captain or balancer or whatever that's going to come up, and I'll show you what that looks like. They get caught up in what, when they might have taken a DISC uh, assessment and it classified them as such. But then I asked them to come down here and read it. And I had this with one of my salespeople yesterday who was arguing with me about who he is. And then we read, you have to go further down because Humantic AI is not looking at 16 attributes. It's looking at 36 attributes. So maybe they'll get the classification wrong, but in Sharon's case up here, I can always scroll over. It tells me 100% confidence that I'm going to be talking to a D. David showed you some of the other things about changing the, uh, the the text down here in an email, what to do or what not to do. But in the interest of time, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go over here to my Humantic AI dashboard. So if I have a dashboard and Sharon works for a company called Exfo, and I've got other companies loaded up in here, but I'm going to go to Exfo. And I'm, here it tells me everybody I'm going to be interacting with. It tells me their archetype, their group, you know, the color associated with their disk, their description. I get all of that. And that's wonderful. But if I said, really, the people who I want to key in on are people I want to key in on are Sharon, Alan, Andy, and Morgan. 
And I'll go down here in this little bug down at the bottom. It says analyze the buying committee. Now in one screenshot, I get, I know the two people who are going to be most influential are two high Ds with a little bit of S characteristic. I have two other influencers who are both I's. So what does that mean to me? Before I even get to the meeting, I can go down here and say, well, here's my friendlies. If I can convince them, they're probably not going to give me much of a fight, right? But they could be weak champions. Over here in the champions, I might have skeptics, but once I convince them, they will go to bat for me internally. And again, down here, just a cheat sheet for the do's and don'ts for each one. So before I'm going to a meeting in person and sitting in a boardroom with the four of them or on a Zoom call or Teams call, I can have this information in advance of what's happening. And let me show you one last thing before I move on from a technology perspective. If I go as a Humantic user, it, it connects to my Outlook calendar. So er, before every meeting I'm going to have for the day, you're going to see all the meetings and how often I use it. Before every one of my meetings, it's going to send me an email with everybody who I'm meeting with and their style. So this is one of our partners. Partners, you're going to see Troy Cantor. He's the CEO. He's risk accepting, friendly challenger, confident. That's me because I'm in the meeting. Tim, he's driven but considerate, dynamic but sincere. And you're going to see all of the people that are in this meeting with us, right? So how cool is that? Now, if I'm going from meeting to meeting like many of you are, you know, it's back to back to back all day and I don't have time to go to Humantic. I don't have time to go to LinkedIn. They're actually pushing to my Outlook calendar. Just really, really awesome, awesome stuff. So with that said, uh, and we're getting ready to wind this up to all the questions and prompts and uh, chats that came in the chat. Remember, we're in the people business. We're here to have a conversation regardless of where we get our information. A talk between two or more people in which thoughts, feelings, and ideas are expressed through questions are asked and answered, or news information is exchanged. That's the definition of a conversation. We are in the people business. There's no interaction. The robot is not going to take our place. They're not going to replace us with our agility, our instinct in the room. If we're a salesperson who's an inside salesperson, we have the luxury of having a single pane of glass with all of the information about the customer, knowledge management, and we can see everything there in one place. That's great. But how about if we're in a boardroom or a conference room or we're out in the oil patch and we're selling wherever we are in our industry, we're in a home, we won't have those things. So we need to rely on our true people to people, human interaction and connection. Look, feelings are everything. We know people buy emotionally, they rationalize intellectually. We need to be able to be agile enough, agile enough to know and have the instinct enough to know, is this a pain conversation or is this a gain conversation? And our hard-won experience, all of the years, all of the times that we've been doing this, that is what has built us to the point where we can have those conversations with the augmentation or enhancement from AI and chat GPT. And then questions. We are in the question business. Humans will ask questions all the time. We just did this. I was over in, in Finland last week. I had five different meetings over there. And a couple of them were, one of them was a, a finalist you know, presentation where we've been talking them, to them for months and they still had questions. Of course they do, because the closer they get to making a decision, that means they've talked to more competitors. They know more they now than they did before engaging us and anyone else. So we have to be able to know, not just ask the questions and have just a list. I ask this, check it off, ask this, check it off. It's what's the question tree? Once they answer, what's the most relevant next question? And after that, and stay in the conversation, not just trying to ask questions for the sake of asking questions. I'll, I'll read this one to you. Uh, people still buy from people. People always have had and always will have questions about what they're considering buying. And people still have feelings about com comments they are considering making to other people or commitments. As long as all of that is true, salespeople who know how to lead effective conversations and know how to use the latest technology will be in heavy demand. This came out of a blog I wrote about, a, uh, about two months or so ago. We got to keep everything simple. AI technology and ChatGPT helps us keep it simple, but not simpler. We still have to do that little bit of work. We still have to put in that little bit of elbow grease and research and making sure that we're current. Just don't take ChatGPT at face value. And I'll leave you with this parable as I wind it up with my last minute. I want you to put these three characters in a, or personas, fire, water, and trust. These are personas. They decided to go on a hike one day. They get to the trailhead and they say, wow, this is a much bigger hike than we anticipated. How are we going to find each other if we get lost? And fire said, well, that'll be easy for me. Wherever there's smoke, you'll find fire. Water spoke up next and said, 
That'll be easy for me too. Just listen for babbling brooks, look for lush green grass and thriving shrubbery, and there you'll, there you'll find me. And Trust spoke up last and said, well, if I get lost, you better keep, you better keep a close eye on me because once trust is lost, it's not easily found. Our job as sellers, job one, two, three, and four is to establish a baseline of trust, earn trust, further trust, and maintain trust. And don't forget, you can join us live in Orlando for the Sandler Summit. We're gonna be getting our best trainers and our top clients from around the world together, March 19th and 20th in Orlando. Go to sandler.com summit for more information.